Today we're going to be comparing a surveying total station to a surveying GNSS receiver. We'll be talking about the functionality of both technologies, time efficiency for data collection, the types of environments that are suitable for each of these equipments, as well as an accuracy assessment between the total station and the GNSS receiver. Special thanks to our friends at Leica Geosystems for sponsoring today's video and giving us the TS-16 total station as well as the GS-18i GNSS receiver in order to do these tests and make this video. Now to understand the functionalities of these two pieces of equipment, I'm going to show you how to set up each of them and the process involved in order to achieve high accuracy data collection. Now this is the process of setting up a total station. First we occupy a point that we either have known coordinates for or coordinates that we will assign. We'll start by laying out the tripod legs and then pulling the total station out of the case and placing it on top of the tripod. The most important thing is that we're actually over our point of occupation. So here I've got a pink painted stake and I'm going to look through our our viewfinder to see that we are directly over this point. Once the total station is completely powered on, I will then use the leveling screws on the tri brack to get the digital bubble on screen to be in the center. Now the total station takes observations by shooting out a laser. So I'll rotate this total station towards me and there's the laser right there pointing at my hand. The laser will point at an object and that object will then be measured and we will have a distance. Now typically the object used is a surveying prism. The laser that comes out of the total station will observe this prism and measure a relative distance from the total station to the prism. Now distance alone is not enough to calculate the coordinates of points. The second component necessary is a change in azimuth, otherwise the angle at which the total station rotates. Now every survey using a total station requires a baseline measurement. This is also known as the backsight measurement that establishes the zero degree azimuth for the project. So I'm going to take my pole with my reflective prism, I'm going to hold a point that's several feet away from the total station, and that point will be the point that that I set up my backsight reading. Now using the Leica Captivate software, the setup process is pretty simple. Now with the setup methods, if I have a known backsight or if I'm using a different method to find my backsight coordinates, I can pick one of these, but I'm just gonna set the orientation, which means that I can specify the angle at which this point is at. So I want this point right here to be point number two, okay? And then the direction. This is the azimuth that I wanna set, so I wanna set ours to zero degrees, so I'll leave this one alone. And perfect, everything looks good here. I'm gonna come up to the top and I'm going to power search for my prism. Lock to okay, the total station found the prism. So now I'll hit distance. It's gonna take an observation here. We wanna make sure the bubble is in the center. Okay, and there we go. We have a distance of 37.071 feet from the total station. And then our height difference is about half of a foot below the total station. All this is good. I'll hit set. And now when I look at the points, you can see point number two was created and we have a new northing and a new elevation based on where we are in relation to the total station. And that beeping that you hear, that is the total station tracking the prism. And so this now means anywhere that I move, the total station is going to follow me and it's going to track the location of the prism anywhere I go, observing its relative angle and distance to the total station. And that's it. That is the method in which total stations collect data. Now with all that being said, here is the process of setting up a GNSS receiver and how we're able to collect data utilizing satellite positioning. Now using just satellites in the sky can give us an accuracy level of about three to five meters. But if we're trying to achieve survey grade accuracy, then we're gonna need to introduce our control segment. There are three segments in collecting high accuracy positioning. There's the space segment, which is the satellites in the skies, the user segment, which is our GNSS receiver, and the control segment, which can be a base station or a cores network. A base station is usually another GNSS receiver that occupies a point on a tripod. This GNSS receiver has a known location and observes satellites in a static format, calculating all of the errors and anomalies of its position since we know where it's at. All of those errors are sent to our rover GNSS receiver providing us with real-time kinematic or RTK corrections while we're surveying in order to achieve centimeter level accuracy. Now you don't have to use your own base station, you could connect through NTRIP to your local cores network. NTRIP stands for Network Transport RTCM via Internet 
protocol and Core's network is the continuously operating reference system. This is usually set up by local state and municipality government agencies and our local base stations that you can connect to so you don't need to set up your own. So the setup process is much easier with a GNSS receiver. All you have to do is attach the receiver to your pole, connect it to your controller, and the physical setup is complete. Inside of Leica Captivate, I'm gonna use the same park job. So I'll just come up over here to the top and start our TK stream. This is going to connect me to the local cores network and allow me to get corrections through entry. If I have a base station set up, then I can switch over here to the base settings and set up my base station. Here I am, I'm connected to the Entrip caster. RTK initialized. And my RTK is now initialized and I'm getting a fixed reading. Using Entrip to connect to the cores network to get corrections usually means that the setup process is probably around one to two minutes. If you're using a base station, then you might be looking to be at closer to five minutes, which makes it similar to a total station. But for most surveying projects, using the cores network is an acceptable method of collecting data. And with a one minute setup time, honestly, it's much faster and much more efficient. Efficient. And the nice thing is now I can just pick up this GNSS receiver, go to any point that I want to observe, set my pole on that point, and I can easily take an observation because the entire machine is in this little receiver. I don't have to depend on any line of sight problems. I can just freely move around and collect data as I want. Now the main disadvantage of total stations is if you were to obstruct the line of sight between the total station and the prism, let's say your head gets in the way, you've now lost your connection and tracking capabilities between the total station and the prism. So now if I move, the total station doesn't follow me. This is also a concern if you're surveying and you end up going behind a tree. Going behind a tree will definitely disturb your line of sight and you won't be able to collect data back here because your total station can't see you. Now in some cases, you're able to just move past the tree, but if you're surveying a residential home or a commercial building, then you definitely need to be able to go on the other side of the building. And in order to do that, you're gonna need to traverse and create a control network. And later in the video, I'm going to show you the time savings of using a GNSS receiver in comparison to survey traversing with a total station. Another major problem with the total station is that all of the measurements are relative, meaning if there is anything wrong with this setup or someone bumps into it in the middle of our survey, no matter what the problem is, everything is dependent on the relative position of the total station. Every point is dependent on the previous point, And if there's an error in one, most likely there's an error in all of them. Now, of course, there are limitations to using a GNSS receiver because there may not be a line of sight obstruction like a total station, but if you cover the top of the GNSS receiver, suddenly I don't have a fixed reading and all of my accuracies are now three to five meters. RTK initialized. Now, of course, I don't expect anyone to just stick their hand over the receiver, but sometimes you are obstructed by trees or canopies or in areas where there just might be a lot of whole structures around you. A GNSS receiver like this might struggle in that environment. The minute I go next to this tree right here where I clearly have a lot of blocked areas, you can see this top portion of the satellite map completely blocked. Not to mention that I've lost RTK, so my corrections are not gonna come through. Now the serving community still uses GNSS receivers and heavily depends on them. It is generally accepted in the industry that a total station is much more accurate than a GNSS receiver. However, the convenience that comes with a GNSS receiver and the expectation of some level of accuracy for some clients might be satisfied by just using this machine rather than pulling out a total station. Now we've talked about how long it takes to set up a total station in a GNSS receiver, but how much time does it take in terms of data collection? Am I really saving that much time by using one over the other? Well, it depends. Now I'm gonna survey this road right here. And again, open sky, no visible obstructions, there's no trees, there's no nothing here. And honestly, this is taking roughly the same amount of time. I need to look down and make sure that the bubble is plumb on the pole, and then I click measure, and if my total station is tracking my prism, it'll take an observation based off of the angle and distance. If I'm using the GNSS receiver, then I'll capture my satellite position at where I am. The time is roughly the same, and I'm not really gaining much by using one over the other. Additionally, there are now IMU sensors that do tilt compensation for both GNSS receivers and total stations. If I were to attach an AP20 auto pole to my prism, I can literally tilt the rod and move faster. I've made a video talking about how much faster using an IMU is for serving, and the same technology is found in GNSS receivers. So again, you're pretty much at the same speed when it comes to serving something like a road. But again, in areas like here where there's a ton of trees involved, total station is gonna struggle with line of sight because the trees are gonna constantly block 
unlock the prism from the total station. Target lock loss. And the GNSS receiver could struggle because there's a lot of canopies to those trees, especially in the summer where there's a lot of leaf coverage, pretty much creating a forest ceiling when you're using the GNSS receiver. Now when it comes to serving a building like this residential home, using a total station is pretty time consuming considering the fact that you are going to have to traverse around the house in order to see all of the features that you need to collect data on. Anytime the total station is obstructed from the prism, you have to set up the total station in a new location in order to observe the prism and continue to collect data. The total runtime that it took me to survey my house using a total station was about 30 minutes. Now, of course, when you're using a GNSS receiver like this one, you're going to have much more control when it comes to data collection because you're able to move around more freely. There's no setting up or traversing. After surveying my home, I was able to do this within 15 minutes, which is about half as long as with the total station. Now, this doesn't mean that GNSS is perfect. Take this scenario, for example. Once I got to the backyard of my home, I had to go under a canopy in order to collect the existing finished floor elevation of my back door. With the total station, this wasn't an issue because I still maintained line of sight and I was able to see the prism even though it was underneath of the canopy because I never lost line of sight to the total station. However, when I did this with the GNSS receiver, I was no longer able to see satellites and I lost my fixed solution. That's when using the Leica GS18i can be a lifesaver. The GS18i has a built-in camera for for image capturing and photogrammetry capability, which means while I'm surveying with my GNSS receiver, if I'm in an area where I can't observe positions because I'm blocking its view from satellites, I can use this camera and walk around my area of interest and using the stitched imagery, extract the coordinates of the points that I need with centimeter level accuracy. And when it comes to using image capture on like a Captivate, here on the home screen, I'm just going to go all the way to the right until I find GS imaging, and then I will select capture image group. And right away I can see a live view of my camera so you can see I see the side of my house so that looks good I'll name my image group back door and now I'm able to pick up my GNSS receiver and I'm gonna head to the other side so I can capture the entire house holding my rod still I'm gonna hit start and I'm gonna walk ever so slowly here and capture as much data as I can I don't need to stop while I do this I can just move along and like a captive it will automatically capture images for me all right I'm at the end of my house House. I'm gonna stop. So I'm gonna go ahead and store this image group. Okay, the image group has been stored. So I'll go back and I'm going to measure in images. And I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to select a point. I think right there is a good spot. That's where the screen meets the actual door. So that's a good spot to measure finished floor elevation. Measure. Okay, there's the location for that image. We'll say next. It looks like Captivate has already pretty much predetermined where that location is in other images. I'll say add. Next. Here's one. Okay, add. Next. Add. Add, next, add, next, add, next. Okay, now we've added 10 images here. The 2D quality is down to four hundredths of a foot, so I'm pretty happy with that quality. I'm gonna go ahead and say store. And so we were able to extract the coordinates of a point underneath a canopy using a GNSS receiver thanks to the image capturing capabilities found on the Leica GS18i. If you'd like to learn more about this incredible GNSS receiver, then check out my link in the description to learn more about the Leica GS18i. Now the big question is, how do the accuracies compare between a total station and a GNSS receiver? Now it goes without saying that a total station is definitely more accurate than a GNSS receiver. But by how much? What is the difference between the total station and the GNSS receiver? And what are the expected accuracies of a total station to itself? To test this, I'm gonna move the tripod and the total station and set it up here. This is point number two, where we did the back sight in our initial setup. By setting up on point number two and back sighting point number one, the distance should not change. So any differences that we get with this second setup will indicate the amount of error that the total station has within itself. It'll also test how well I can set up a total station. So let's set up the total station on point number two. Okay. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to set my pole on point number one. And for the setup method, this is no longer going to be set orientation. We're actually going to use the known back site because we actually have coordinates for this point. Now we are occupying point number two, actually. So I'll select point number two since the total station is set up on point number two. For instrument height, I already measured this and the instrument height is 4.81. 
Okay, this looks good. I'm gonna say okay. Now the back sight point is point number one, which is where we are right now, and our target height 5.712 feet. So the computed horizontal distance is 37.071. I'm going to search for our prism. Lock the target. Okay, we're good. I'm gonna plumb the rod and take a distance. Okay, average horizontal error is five thousandths of a foot. That's one and a half millimeters. And then the height, 0 0.002, under one millimeter of error. So you're talking one to one and a half millimeters of error with the total station, which is incredible amount of accuracy that you can achieve. So this Leica TS-16 has a one second angular accuracy, one of the more accurate total stations on the market, which makes it a great benchmark for surveyors in terms of accuracy. Now, because the total station is in a local coordinate system and this GNSS receiver gives us geodetic positions, in order to assess its accuracy, we're going to be observing observing both point number one and point number two and inversing between the points to find the horizontal and vertical distances and comparing those distances to the total station. Okay, I've got my GNSS receiver connected. I'm gonna start our RTK stream. RTK initialized. Okay, and our RTK is initialized. Now for point number, I'm going to just call this one point number 101 to distinguish between point number one from the total station. So my pole height is at 1.8 meters, which is equivalent to 5.906 feet. So I'll go ahead and stick our GNSS receiver on the point. I'll hold plumb and measure. Point stored. Okay, great. All right, now we'll head over to point number two. Hold the rod still. Point number 102 and measure. Point stored. Okay. Great. If we take a look at the coordinates here, point number 101 and 102 are in state plane coordinates, Michigan South Zone. But by comparison, if we inverse between 1 and 2 and 101 and 102, we find that the horizontal difference is 7 hundredths of a foot and the vertical difference is 1 tenth of a foot, which means that there's still a decent amount of accuracy that you can expect from a GNSS receiver. Whether you use a total station or a GNSS receiver, understand the advantages and limitations of each and use the right tool for the right job to achieve the right results.